What's good, everybody? Thanks for tuning in. I'm going to be talking about all the characters that, that are going to be in the new Deadpool 2 movie. It's a lot of new characters. Things are kind of confusing. So on this channel, I like to make comic books and comic book movies easy to understand for people who are not into comic books at all. Maybe you've seen a trailer online and you just wanted to check out a movie. So you want a general understanding of who these characters are. Can this person fly? Do they shoot lasers out their ass? Uh, you know, just what, what can you expect when you go see the movie? Some channels go a little bit too in depth and you don't care about what happened in issue 101 from 1970, you know? So yeah, today I'm going to be talking about the character Cable and uh, the X-Force and they're going to be in the new Deadpool 2 movie. I'll have a link for the trailer in the description in case you want to check that out. But yeah, let's get into it. So the character Cable, he is the son of Cyclops and Jean Grey. Um, if you've ever seen the X-Men or the X-Men comics, the X-Men movies that they had out, um, Jean Grey and Cyclops, they had a son. It's a little convoluted, the whole background story into that, but that's the simplest way to explain it. And um, their son, his name is Cable. Well, Cable is sort of a time traveler, meaning that some comics he's from the past, some he's from the future. It just depends on the story. Um, he also, his powers and abilities, He's a telekinesis and he has telepath powers, um, but you never really see him use those because when he does use them, it's kind of he's using them internally to fight this virus that's inside of him because he has a virus inside of him, that metal arm. That's not really a metal arm that he chose. His body is being taken over by basically machinery. It's a virus turning his body into a machine. And if it does overtake him he won't just be like a big machine guy no he'll die so that's why he uses those powers to basically strave off that disease or that virus and keep him living um he has superhuman strength he has superhuman um agility uh healing um he also carries a lot of weapons one thing you see with cable is a lot of weapons he gets weapons from the future from different times different places and he uses them in all his battles some are connected to his body so you ever see weapons that are uses his own powers he can basically have his powers go through a weapon and lastly but not least is the teddy bear this teddy bear belonged to his daughter and uh, she was murdered but uh, he carries this teddy bear with him everywhere he goes so yeah that's him uh next up is going to be the character that you probably seen her in um in uh the first deadpool movie vanessa carlisle she plays a character of copycat um, she basically is like a mystique from X-Men. She can shape shift and, and do all that. But the only thing is she goes to a, a like molecular level. So when she shape shifts, she has all your powers and abilities and everything like that. But she only could do it for a short amount of time where mystique, she can transform into you, but she doesn't take on all your powers and abilities, just your physical form. Yeah. So I hope they do more with her in a second Deadpool movie or maybe introduce a little bit of her powers. But yeah, next up, we got the character of Warpath. He is basically like seven feet tall, superhuman strength, superhuman agility, healing. And uh, also he has the ability of flight. So that was later on added to him. Um, you might see him in the X-Men Days of Future Past movie. They had a different version of him in the movie. Um, he also carries around these two daggers at all times. So yeah, you'll probably get a little bit of him, but he's kind of like a Bane, you know, a self-explanatory character is just a big brute that sometimes can fly. Next up, we had Boom Boom, and I'm not making these names up. That is her name. Uh, she basically shoots these little plasma fireballs, little concussion shots um, from different sizes, and she can control when they detonate. So if she throws one at you, she can control uh, when it detonates and the sound because she can muffle the sound and basically blow you up without nobody knowing. And um, they have changed her powers. Uh, sometimes she can shoot out her uh, little fires like in a stream, that little concussive, you know, shot. She can shoot them out in streams or she can just throw it at you in the form of a fireball where it explodes when it hits you. All right. Next up, we got one of my favorite characters, Shatterstar. This character is basically genetically engineered in space. Um, he's not a human, not an alien. He's just something different. Um, he has every possible power you can have superhuman strength speed ability telekinesis he can open up wormholes and portals um, he usually carries two swords 
um, doesn't have to be those two swords, but it's usually our two swords. And he can basically do this wave elect electro bioelectricity through his body and it goes through his weapons into you. So yeah, he just has crazy powers. I don't think they're gonna really elaborate on all those in the movie. I think they're gonna try to keep it pretty basic. All right, next up is Feral, and I'm not gonna waste too much time. She's pretty much just like a human cat. I mean, what you see is what you get. There's nothing really to it. Uh, can track, can fight really good, and is, yeah, a human cat. Next up is a Cannonball. This guy is kind of like, guys, uh, electroplasmic uh, radio radioactive energy around itself, and he can trap you inside of it. He can use it to fly. He can go at supersonic speeds, and uh, he also can shoot it out, like throw it at you. Uh, so yeah, he's pretty cool. I don't know if they're gonna really elaborate on that because some of these characters have some really elaborate, crazy powers, and with the budget of Deadpool, I don't know if they're really gonna be going that far. Uh, next up is a character of Domino. Um, there's a little controversy around this character because in the comics she's white, but um, in the movie right here they chose to cast a black character. I really couldn't care less if they chose to cast a black, a white, a Asian, a Hispanic character. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't change anything about the character. It's not pertinent to the character that she's one race or another. I'm just happy that they chose the person they did because she's fine as hell. I think we all can agree on that. And I'm pretty sure she's going to do a great job. The powers of Domino consist of basically probability. She can, everything always goes in her favor. So if you are trying to kill her, she, you're maybe your gun a jam or you always miss, you know what I'm saying? So whatever happens, it always happens in her favor. The door closes right behind her when she's getting away from you. And this power sort of kicks in when she's in stressful situations. And um, she also is good with like hand-to-hand -hand combat and weaponry. So she was trained in all those aspects of, of fighting. Um, but more, more often than not, she uses her powers to like escape and, and things like that. Um, next up is a character that we've seen in Deadpool 1. Her name is Negasonic Teenage Warhead, probably one of the more popular characters from that movie. Her powers in the comic books are, are massive. I mean, she can do telekinesis. She can basically make something appear out of thin air. She built her own house and everything like just by thinking about it. But in the comics, that's that's where I say it just goes a little too far. Now, as far as the movies, um, she uses her power of uh, plasma radiation to surround herself and she can use that to fly or lift herself off for short distances. She can use it to uh, basically create an explosion. So if she's surrounded by people, she can let off an explosion and it knocks all this plasma and fire and radiation from her body. Basically, anybody around her is going to go blasting far away. Um, and all, she also can use this to surround herself like with a shield so you cannot shoot her or hurt her when she's inside of that. And if you go try to touch her, I'm pretty sure you get your hand burned off. Well, all right. I can't wait to see these characters later on this year in Deadpool 2. Uh, let me know in the comment section which one you uh, is your favorite, which one you like. And don't forget if to make a comment about how would you like to see this channel go in the future. As far as videos you want me to make, I'm always open to ideas and suggestions. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you did enjoy this video. It's much appreciated. If you want to get at me on Twitter with a question or uh, suggestions for a video, it's at B underscore. But other than that, y'all, I hope you have a great day. And I'll catch your ass out there in the universe. Peace.